ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kaka Coffee Break, and I am back with game number four between uh, EG's Hawk spawning here in the bottom right corner of NASL Antigua Shipyard, and his opponent is still going to be Moose Hotsgawabs spawning as the blue Protoss in the top left corner. Huck able to uh, keep himself alive in that last matchup. Hotswabs went for a four gate with a proxy pylon in Huck's base. However, Huck with beautiful control was able to win that battle by the 8-10 mark in the game. A very, very quick game. That is what every single PvP used to be like. But thankfully, not so much anymore. And especially on a map like Antigua Shipyard with cross positions, it can be a long ways to your opponent's base. Now, this is from the NASL, who do uh, best of five series. So, Huck, if he can win this game, will bring the series up to an ace match. And if the trends follow, as, as they have been, and I would even say that this goes back to tournaments like MLG and the like, when Huck plays PvP, I'll, I'll say for PvP, because I've seen him do really, really well in macro PvT, but... In Huck's PvPs, he seems to have a little bit of struggle with the uh, late mid-game to late game. So the earlier that he can end the game, the better off he is. I think that's why he went for the Blink Stalker, the, uh, the very, very quick Blink Stalker play in game number two. Hoping to end it early, however, the Immortals were in place for Hasuobs, and Huck was not able to break that defense. So I think Hasuobs would benefit from trying to play a defensive game. And I think Huck would benefit from trying to play an offensive game. However, that means nothing about these two players. Huck now has a little bit of momentum finally going into his favor. So it'll be interesting to see what he decides to do in this game. Hossawabs obviously knows that he can try, if he, if he really feels like it, one more big strategy. Or one more maybe cheesy strategy, one more whatever strategy. His playbook is 100% open right now, is what I'm saying. Because... He, he, even if he loses this game, he's still in the tournament he'll, and he'll have one game left to try to play a big, real good game for us. And Huck really just needs to play to what he feels he is most comfortable with, which I feel is going to be a fast game. Once again, though, that means nothing, and I'm going to be interested to see what happens. We do have uh, Huck having taken his second gas, and Hosswaps has taken a later second gas as well. Huck's probe still just being super, super pesky over here. Delaying the mining for as long as possible, finally picking up some minerals by accident, and it looks like that pro will be heading home with the uh, this stalker now completing. Very good timing by Huck to get that probe out of there. In the meantime, Huck's own stalker is out, and he is dropping a robo, so we will be seeing a one gate robo out of Huck. One gate robo, I would not be surprised at all to see that go up into a three gate robo attack of some sort. I was talking in games number one and two how a popular expand strategy, holy crap, th those are words that are not used in Protoss vs. Protoss, expand strategy. A popular expand strategy right now in PvP is the one gate robo zealot, sta uh, zealot sentry immortal mixture. Good against blink stalkers, allows you to get uh, a very quick nexus, that's about the fastest expand you can possibly safely do in PvP. However, the three gate, a little bit more popular for expanding, much safer, and it also allows you to do a lot of aggression off it. Now, it looks like we do have two stalkers for Hossowops moving up into Huck's base. However, Huck does have one stalker out and does not have anything else out right now. So actually, if Hossowops wants to move up, he could have free reign in this base for just a little bit of time, as it is currently four stalkers to one stalker. That is not good for Huck. Believe it or not, you do not want to be down in numbers. It looks like Hossowops may be gearing up for an expansion here, as we have this probe rallied over to Gallants and Minerals. And, well, my goodness, that is a one-gate expand coming out of Hossowops. Two-gate, pardon me, a two-gate expand coming out of Hossowops. That, that is risky. That is about as risky as you want to go. And if Huck sees this, he is going to be able to punch this in this stalker. Let's just probe. Go right on by it. This probe is going to get rather close. I think it might be stopped, though. Yes, indeed, it is stopped before it gets to that expansion. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So we do have the three-gate expand, and it looks like a uh, two-gate expand coming out of Hosswabs. It looks like Huck is going to be able to punish this. Once again, going for that one-gate robo blink play. The robotics allows you to get that, uh, that observer out. 
so that you can see the high ground and blink up into the high ground. And the Twilight Council obviously allows you to get that blink play. Now it looks like there are, once again, uh, four stalkers out on the field for Hasu Obs. And a stalker and an immortal out for Hug. And it looks like one of those stalkers may go down. No, Hasu Obs is able to pull that back. Very good play by Hasu Obs. Hasu Obs now also getting his own robotics fa uh, facility just now finishing up. Making an observer from that. I don't know if he had a good read or if he's just getting a robotics as part of his strategy but he might be able to pick off this observer from Huck which would be extremely extremely annoying pulling back his stalkers to the middle and from the middle and it looks like yes I think he did see that as the stalkers are up in the main base right now and it is tailing he is currently tailing this observer this observer is going to be very very close I think he might make it no no he is picked off Huck will have to annoyingly make another observer those take quite a bit of time to get across the map as they are not the fastest unit in the world. Hossalops is going to be able to see this attack coming as he does hold this watchtower. Huck not able to pick off that stalker, which would have been nice. It is always not. Oh, but Huck is trying to get a flank on this stalker, and it looks like he's going to be able to do a little bit of damage here. It's going to be fairly close to this stalker. I don't think it's going to be able to get away, though. And 16 health, 3 health, just needs one more shot. And no, he is not able to pick off Hossalops' stalker there. And let me tell you, folks, when you're doing a strategy like this, Every single bit of damage that you can do really, really helps. I do not know. It looked like that Immortal is falling back. Oh, man. There's some force fields there. But Huck, having Blink finished already, is able to Blink back. That strategy is revealed now. Oswabs going to just continue pumping out Immortals. And it looks like there is one Immortal on the field. It's the second one being made right now. A few more blows being exchanged right there. It looked like that was going mainly in Huck's favor. Huck trying to take out some of those sentries. And we do have the second immortal out now on the field. Two more gateways being laid down for Huck. And Huck actually may able to secure an expansion of his own. I completely missed that one. We are currently up to five gateways from Huck. And it looks like Huck has uh, blinked up into the main base. And it looks like he wants to get back out of there now that those two immortals are up on the uh, up in the main base. That is not something that you can contend against. I like this hold from Hotswabs. Keeping a couple of immortals up on the high ground with a couple of zealots. Meanwhile, keeping his stalker and sentry down on the low ground. This is a very, very good play by by Hossawabs. I can't think of a better hold, but it looks like uh, Huck does see a little bit of a uh, break in Hossawabs' defense, and he's going to need to blink back down. Those immortals are getting mighty close to waiting for the cooldown, and yes, he does blink back down before you losing a single stalker. However, we do have one stalker severely injured, can only take one more hit from a stalker or a uh, an immortal before he goes down. Huck doesn't look like he's committing fully to this strategy. He did. Oh, well, it looks like actually a lot the same as we saw in game number two. As Huck has not yet taken his third or fourth gas. Just trying to get as many minerals as possible to keep on making stalkers for this matchup. In the meantime, we do have a dark shrine being created. Where is that? Where is that? There it is. A dark shrine. Because as we know, if you're behind in PvP, what is the most viable follow-up? Nothing other than a Dark Trident. And Huck is able to get Hoshwab's Observer over the high ground. So Huck's Observer currently has all the free reign that it could ever want. Especially if Hoshwab's does not make remake that Observer. That's going to be very, very critical if Dark Templar come, on, come down on the field soon. Another forward pilot is being warped in. Now, I hear another engagement over here. And it looks like a few shots were engaged. I don't think anything died there. 1 or 2 to 94 supply in favor of Hoshwab's. Just a little bit ever so slightly. That Dark Shrine is now finished. We are having 3 Dark Templar warped in. There are a 4th Dark Templar. There are a lot of zealots on this field. And it looks like we are going to be having Archons coming in. So these Archons will be able to crush any force fields going up the ramp. And I think that is Huck's strategy. He's going to want to wait for these uh, Archons to finish. So two Dark Templar being kept in the main army. These Dark Templar are going to be leading the charge. If those force fields go down, they're going to be completely worthless with these Archons. Here. The Archons really need to get up. The Zell is blocking the Archons off. So the Archons cannot get up. But in the meantime, the Sockers dip up, trying to take out that uh, Colossus. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. No, indeed. Huck is going to have to fall back after that engagement. That engagement not quite going the way he wanted to. Really, he needs to get... And this Archon out into the front. Now the Dark Templar leading the charge. It looks like the Azura has not finished those. So the Dark Templar are being revealed. And Huck not doing too well in that engagement. 124 to 92 supply. That is not where Huck wants to be at this point in the game. And he still has not dropped his next two gases. So gases 3 and 4 for Huck are not operational yet. Blinking up into the main of Hoswap. <coughs> picking off a pylon. And waiting for his cooldown so he can blink back down. No, deciding to engage. Trying to take out that the Colossus. Once again, not able to take out the Colossus. Though he has to fall back. To try to save those stalkers. And though it looks like he has quite a few zealots on the field. <clears throat> Once again wants to try to push up the ramp here. 
A couple gateways being made to try to make a semi wall off. This Archon once again being blocked off by all of the zealots. Not able to get up. There we go. Now able to cross a couple of the force fields. Two, two Colossal now on the field. I don't know if it's going to be enough from Huck. Once again, Huck is going to need to fall back as there's just not enough to be able to take out this uh, mixture of Hoswabs. Hoswabs has a very, very nice mixture. Trying to take down a Colossus from the low ground. Does not look like he's going to be able to get it once again. There are two Colossus very, very low on health, though. Here are the health bars for those two Colossus. Very, very low. Could be taken out almost instantly. There's an Immortal on the field for Huck. Trying to pick away at anything it possibly can. It looks like Huck is making a little bit of headway there. Rushing that Immortal and trying to take out a Colossus. Does get one Colossus. Making the second one instead. No, it does not be. It is not able to get the second Colossus. Huck trying to continue on with his strategy, but I just do not think that he has enough. He's going to have to fall back if he wants to have any chance of holding a Against this army of Hoswabs, two Colossus and two Immortals on the field for Hoswabs. Those are the units that we really need to pay attention to in this combat. These uh, Immortals are going to be able to do massive damage to these Sarkers. The Sarkers need to make sure to stay out of the range of the Immortals. They do have equal range on the Immortals. Six and six for both those players. The Observer is flying around. Huck's base is able to see pretty much everything that is going on. Huck just now taking the gases number three and four. And... Now Hoswops is looking to be in a very, very good position. 143 to 69 supply, double Colossus production at the moment, and it looks like Hoswops is looking to be a little bit aggressive now. Getting ground weapons level 1, so that will give him the upgrade advantage. Tech advantage is about even for both players now, as, H as Huck does have those Dark Templars for the Archons, which is his tier 3, and Hoswops does have the Colossus, which is his tier 3. This Observer needs to be taken out if he wants any, any Dark Templar to be able to help hold. But no, it looks like you're morphing those into an Archon. Instead, the Archon does immediately go down. And I don't know if Hoswab is going to have quite enough to defeat Home Field Advance. However, once again, these two Immortals are going to be able to do so much damage to these Stalkers. But the Zealots in the front line doing quite a bit of damage themselves. The Stalkers now blinking up, trying to take out a Colossus. They do uh, manage to get one Colossus. And there's the GG from Huck. And I'm confused. I'll be honest, I am confused because... I thought that NASL was a best of five format, but I have a fifth game. So I'm going to have to go ahead and assume that this is a, a, a semifinals game of some sort and go on to a game number five. I, I apologize for that uh, glaring mistake there. We are going to, have, going to have a game number five between these two players. So we are going to be 3-1 in favor of Hasuwabs. So stick around, find out what happened in that last game. Huck, once again, uh, going over that trend of not being able to win uh, in any sort of lengthy game. And, yeah, he really just needs to be able to keep these games short if he wants to have any hope of winning, I think, because Hoswabs just too good in the late game. If you have not already, subscribe and comment. I do take every comment into consideration. Stick around for game number five between these two players. This is Coffee Break, signing out.